excited to be back. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. You're currently streaming live with us right here in the major south on Attenville TV. This is the Cracker Dan Show with myself, Kibera Hiralal, as your host. And if you want to interact with us in studio today, please do so and comment at the bottom of the screen. Oh, good morning to you, Darshni Manikam, coming from YouTube. Morning, morning, honey. <laughs> Hey, why don't you join me at the crack of dawn? You, or, or are you still in bed? Let us know. We want to know if Mrs. or Miss rather, Miss Money Cub is still sitting in bed. It's so nice to see you early in the morning, right here on the crack of dawn. All right, morning all you crack of dawners. Welcome to the show. Uh, if you are watching the show for the very first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already. Now, I'm your host, Kimera Hiralal. For those of you who don't know me, I laugh. All right, uh, well, I see my TikTok is going very, very well. Ah! I'm going to also direct to use the course of the week to get me a nice, you know, a hashtag uh, Kimera Hiralal one uh, with a TikTok icon so you guys can find me on TikTok as we are trying to grow that platform so we can stream there too. I like streaming live, yeah, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as we've got a full hour of fun, fun and fun, it's going to be a jam-packed hour of fun. And you know the show is all about your current affairs, or all the things that are happening around you. We, we like, well, we usually do share with you scary things about the world. But today is actually quite interesting. Uh, we're doing the Anunnaki, okay? Uh, for those of you who don't know what an Anunnaki is, stay tuned for that. And uh, we've got lots coming up. We always open the show with Wackhead Simpson's uh, Senseless Survey. Uh, today he's talking about mayonnaise. <laughs> it's just a lube in a sandwich. <laughs> Sounds so gross, right? <laughs> lube is lubricant, guys. <laughs> anyway, it's a family show. Hey, behave yourself. All right, and then we've got an orchestra uh, medley coming up. Uh, well, we've got people coming from around the world. We've got performers from Italy uh, performing our musical entertainment for you guys. We've also got uh, USA coming uh, on board today, as well as Netherlands. Ending off my show, as always, I love Auntie Sheila. I just wish she would uh, produce her productions every day. It would be nice. But uh, shout out to Auntie Sheila all the way. Durban, yeah, yeah. I like you. <laughs> You know, Ajishila wears her makeup better than I do. She's beautiful. Anyway, guys, stay tuned for a jam packed show and a full hour of fun. We'll come back straight up. Break. Look at slide four. <gasps> Becky, don't lose your cool. Think of the quarter pounder. Mm, it will taste like sun, sunshine on a rainy day. Oh, so make it a day. Welcome back, you cracker daughters! Woo! All right, all right, all right. We already started the show. If you if you just joined us, you're a little bit late, but it's okay. It's a couple of minutes. And uh, well, we are streaming live in Malaysia South on Attenborough TV. This is the Cracker Dan Show with myself, Kimera Hiralal, as your host, baby. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get straight into it. Uh, well, today we are doing and opening up the show, as always. My favorite radio presenter, baby, Wacky Simpson. Sorry, what is your name? My name is Dobson. Hi, Dobson. I'm calling you from the Census Bureau. How are you? Fine. Good, good. I've been uh, employed to just ask you a couple questions over the phone. It'll take about 10 seconds. Okay. If electricity comes from electrons, does morality come from morons? No, man. No, man. Yes. <laughs> Do infants enjoy infancy as much as adults enjoy adultery? Yes. For sure. Why is the man who invests all your money called a broker? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure as well about that one. Okay, when cheese gets its picture taken, what does it say? <laughs> Me. Me. Okay. Why isn't the number 11 pronounced 1T1? I don't think that all was going to sound uh, very nice anyway. The sentence, I am, is reportedly the shortest sentence in the English language. Could it be that I do is the longest sentence? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're the same. How do those dead bugs get into those enclosed light fixtures? Okay, 
because they are like Houdini. Do you know that if you can't look back at your younger self and realize you were an idiot, you are currently that idiot? Would you want to hold because there's another call coming? Okay, I've just got one more question. Uh, I don't know. If one pom pom is a pom pom, do they say I have two pom 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 poms? No, I've got two pom poms. <laughs> Only two pom poms. Is mayonnaise just sandwich lube? <laughs> that was the one that, that stumped him. That was the question that took him over the edge. Mayonnaise is just sandwich lube. Oh, no. Not the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it on almost everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a versatile yeah. babe. Yeah. yeah. Sure, she does that. <laughs> yeah. Mayonnaise, one of the great wonders of the world. Wackhead Simpson, everybody, live right here on Atomville TV. A very, very good morning to Pris James coming in from Facebook. Good morning, Kamara. Good morning, Pris. Yo, yo. Welcome to the show. All right, all right. So, guys, we're talking about the Anunnaki. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the Wackhead Simpson fact. It was brilliant, as always. It makes me laugh every day. <laughs> all right, so uh, the Anunnaki is what we're talking about today. I'd like you to join the conversation. Uh, interact with us in studio today as we are streaming live and you can and comment at the bottom of the screen but hey even if we are not live and you like the show we appreciate your comments and your interaction all right so today's show is going to be fun okay a quick one before we cut to commercial okay so the anunnaki okay is also transcribed as anununaki and ananaki and nana and ananaki or uh, anarchy okay lots of people call it anarchy around the world so as far as i heard right and the other variations are groups of baby deities, of Marians, the Arcadians, the Assyrians, and the Babylonians. Now, in the earliest Sumerians' writings about them, which come from the post, uh, well, Acadi well, they call it the Akkadian uh, period, the Anarchy are deities in the pantheon. Uh, they actually are descendants of the An and Ki. So the god of the heavens and the goddess of earth and their primary function was to decree the fates of humanity. Now they should not be confused with the Akalu. Now when we come back we're going to talk about the name Anarchy and where it's derived from and we'll show you a bit of footage of what we're talking about so maybe you learned something today. Stay exactly where you are, we'll come back straight after this commercial break. taste that says you've arrived living a life of illusion leaving your finances on the rocks in this world of Bazotina band do you want a bank that takes your money or a bank that takes your money seriously on Attenville TV to check that out. So check my girl, sorry. All right, all right. So we're talking about the Naki and we're talking about Anunnaki. <laughs> Lots of people say it differently. Uh, there are different names and ways of addressing it, so it's fine, they all mean the same thing. So we're talking about uh, the, the Anunnaki, right? Now the name An, uh, Anunnaki is derived from An, the Sumerian god of the sky, and the name variously written Nuna. So it's Anunnaki, or some people say Unaki, and it's also uh, well the meaning of the Anuke part uh, means prince, princely offspring, or an N. You get it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So the Anaki or the Anunaki were believed to be and his con and his consort, the Earth Goddess. Now um, uh, everybody knows the Earth, Earth Goddess's name was Ki, right? So Samuel Noah Kramer identifies Ki with the Sumerian mother goddess Nenhursa and stating that they were originally the same figure. Now the oldest of the Anunnaki was Enlil, the god of air, by the way, um, and chief of God's Sumerian pantheon. Now the Sumerians believe that until Enlil was born, heaven and earth were inseparable. Now then, uh, Enlil split heaven and earth into two places and carried away the earth, while his father, An, carried away the sky. Coming up today, we've got the top five Anunnaki, well, Anunnaki rather, 
Uh, these are Anunnaki encounters that don't want you to actually know about. A lot of people say they don't want you to know about this. So we've got a show hosted by Aiden Hansen today and he's going to take us their top five. Coming in at number five, the Wendina. In Mesopotamian legend, the Anunnaki are a group of ancient deities, often mentioned in Sumerian, Akkadian, and Babylonian mythology. The term Anunnaki translates to those who came down from the heavens. These deities were believed to be the children of Anu, the god of the heavens, and were associated with various aspects of life, such as creation, destiny, and rulership. In modern times, there have been speculative theories and claims suggesting that the Anunnaki were actually ancient extraterrestrial beings who influenced Earth's development, enslaving humanity in order to collect the Earth's precious resources and take them back to their home planet of Nibiru. These theories often link the Anunnaki to ancient advanced civilizations, and proof of our interactions with them span across ancient history. And that's where I come in. I'm Aiden, and here are the top 5 real Anunnaki encounters they don't want you to know about. And at number 5 is Wangina. The Wangina, revered ancestral spirits in the Kimberley region of Western Australia, are depicted in rock art with striking features reminiscent of beings not entirely of this world. These figures with their radiant halos and prominent eyes are believed to possess the power to shape the land, control the weather, and guide human behavior. Indigenous traditions hold that the Wangina brought life-giving rain and imparted essential knowledge to their people. Within this framework, a parallel can be drawn to the Anunnaki and the idea of them being ancient aliens. Just as the Wangina are perceived as intermediaries between the human and celestial realms, the Anunnaki held dominion over various aspects of earthly existence, as they acted as controllers of our rulers, our food, and many resources. Many theorize that the Wangina and Anunnaki are actually the same beings, aliens from outer space on Earth guiding these two vastly different cultures towards their goals. If you were to look at different depictions of the two, you can see quite clearly how alien each look, especially the Wangina. Artwork of the Wangina dates back 4,000 years, long before the idea of big-headed, big-eyed aliens even came to be, but remains very humanoid. The Wangina and the Anunnaki transcend their cultural confines, evolving into symbols of a greater cosmic narrative. Their intertwined roles as agents of guidance and enlightenment reflect the enduring human quest to comprehend the mysteries of existence and are placed within the vast cosmic tapestry. The Anunnaki are chiefly mentioned in, in literary uh, texts and very little evidence to support the existence of any cult uh, of, of them as yet, well, it's been unearthed. So this is likely due to the fact that each member of the Anunnaki had his or her uh, own individual cult separate from the others. Now similarly, no representations of the Anunnaki as a complete group have yet been discovered. Now although a few depictions of two or three individual members together have been identified, so deities in, in ancient Mesopotamia were almost exclusively anthropomorphic and they were thought to possess extraordinary powers. Now, uh, they were also known as, uh, well, they were often uh, envisioned as being a tremendous physical size. Now, the deities typically wore a uh, melon, all right, and an ambiguous substance which covered them in terrifying splendor. Now, melon could also be worn by heroes, kings, giants and even demons the effect that seeing a deity's melon has uh, on a human is described as ni and a word for physical tingling of flesh now deities were all were almost always depicted wearing horn ha uh, caps consisting of up to seven superimposed pairs of x horns now they were also sometimes depicted wearing clothes with elaborate decorative gold and silver ornaments sewn into them. Coming in at number four, the Ramayana flying objects. At number four are the Ramayana flying objects. Written around 500 BC, the ancient Indian epic Ramayana is a treasure trove of mythic tales and cosmic adventures that have captured the imagination of generations. Amidst its rich tapestry of gods, heroes, and fantastical realms, intriguing descriptions of flying objects allude to the intervention of Anunnaki and the ability of UFOs. The Ramayana's depictions of airborne chariots and celestial vehicles raise questions about whether these accounts could indeed be early records of 
alien encounters. In the Ramayana, the Pushpaka Vimana, which I've definitely pronounced wrong, stands out as a remarkable example. Pushpaka meaning flowery, and Vimana being the name of flying palaces and chariots. Pushpaka Vimana was described as a flying palace. This Vimana was said to be a marvel of engineering, capable of traversing vast distances through the skies. Its mention in the epic evoked imagery of an otherworldly craft that defies the conventional understanding of ancient transportation. The detailed descriptions of the Pushpaka Vimana's speed, agility, and luminous appearance bear uncanny similarities to modern UFO sightings, sparking the idea that these were created by the Anunnaki to aid humanity in the transportation of people and goods. The Ramayana also includes accounts of aerial battles and celestial combat, where gods and demons supposedly waged war using powerful weapons and flying vehicles. These descriptions evoke images of advanced technology and otherworldly conflict, which supports the idea of alien intervention, with these fighting gods being Anunnaki using their spacecrafts. The Vimanas and chariots described in the Ramayana possess attributes that align with modern UFO accounts, such as sudden maneuvers, incredible speeds, and radiant luminosity. Back then, it was really easy to mistake flying saucers and aliens for literal gods, because the idea of aliens didn't even exist back then. This is what made the Anunnaki so powerful. They would receive warships simply for being on Earth, as there was no other explanation for their existence. Kinda makes me wish I had a time machine, could dress up like an alien and just start telling people what to do all the time. Though I'd probably get bored of it pretty quickly, so maybe not. As I've mentioned, the ancient Mesopotamians, the ancient Mesopotamians believed that their deities lived in heaven. Now, after an earlier history of visiting Earth in the mythical texts, and uh, that God's statue was actually phys uh, it was a physical embodiment of God Himself. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> As such, cult statues were given constant care and attention, and a set of priests were assigned to actually tend to them. Now these priests would clothe their statues and place feasts before them so they could eat. A deity's temple was believed to be that deity's literal place of residence. Now the gods had boats and full-size barges, or uh, well, bar barges rather, which were normally stored inside their temples and were used to transport their cult statues along waterways. During, um, well, this was during various uh, religious festivals. So the gods also had chariots, uh, chariots rather, which were used to tra uh, for transporting their cults and uh, their cult statues by land. Now sometimes a deity's cult statue would be transported to the location of a battle so that the deity could watch the battle unfold. Now the major deities of the Mesopotamian uh, pantheon, which included the Anaki, were believed to participate in the assembly of the gods. Now through which the gods made all of their decisions, um, the assembly was seen as a divine counterpart uh, to the semi-democratic legislative system that existed during the third dynasty of UR. Coming in at number three, the Renaissance art. Next up at number three is Rest Right. There is a surprising amount of Anunnaki and UFO evidence within all sorts of artwork that was created throughout history. The first example is a painting by Italian artist Carlo Crivelli, painted in 1486 called The Annunciation with Saint Emidius. The artwork depicts the traditional Christian scene of the angel Gabriel announcing the impending birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary. However, what captures the attention of modern observers is the curious object in the sky above the cityscape. Hovering amidst the clouds is a circular disc-like form with beams of light extending downward. Hmm, looks like a UFO to me. The circular shape, radiant beams, and apparent motionless in the sky have led many to speculate that the artist depicted an Anunnaki spacecraft, albeit within the framework of a religious narrative. A similar object shining with a mysterious light is seen in the Madonna with Saint Giovannino, made in the late 1400s. In the top right corner is an airborne craft, just behind Madonna's shoulder. It is often said that Madonna is picking her children from the object due to how she is facing away from it. Furthermore, a man is seen looking at the UFO, with his dog barking at it. The same is shown in the Baptism of Christ, made in 1710, which shows four columns of light being emitted from a disc shining onto the baptism below. Could the origins of Christ be caused by the will of the Anunnaki? Maybe. There's also the Miracle of Snow, created sometime between 1428 and 1432. It portrays the legend of snowfall that happened on a hot summer's day in Rome during the 4th century. Jesus and Mary overlook a large cloud, and behind them is a legion of flying saucers. While some argue 
these could be clouds, observing the detailed artistry of this work and the creator's other works, it makes no sense for him to have not just painted actual clouds, unless there's something else entirely. There's also the painting made at an unknown time by an unknown artist titled Israel, Put Your Hope in the Lord, which depicts a UFO hovering over a burning church. Whether or not this UFO was the cause of the blaze, or if it was there to stop it, remains a mystery. Additionally, there is the Crucifixion of Christ, made in 1350, which depicts two flying objects in each top corner of the artwork. While these don't resemble the flying saucers seen in the other paintings, their presence lacks explanation, as there's no halo around them showing them that they are divine beings, which is what would usually happen. Plus, the one on the right looks a hell of a lot like Sputnik 1. To quote The Incredibles, coincidence? I think not. As the Anunnaki were known for their attempts at controlling the development of mankind, creating a holy figure like Jesus definitely fits their modus operandi. These are only a handful of examples though. There have been many other UFO depictions in historical and religious paintings, so leave a comment if you think of other paintings I might have missed. We're still talking about Anunnaki. Stay exactly where you are, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to come back straight after this commercial break. And we are talking about Anunnaki today. Join the conversation as you can comment at the bottom of the screen, guys. Now, uh, for those of you who missed the show, please scroll a little uh, like back with your bar if you are watching from YouTube. I know I'm not sure how it works on Facebook, but uh, yeah, we're streaming live from YouTube. It's our uh, Activable TV is our YouTube channel. If you are searching for it, and if you're watching the show for the first time, don't forget to like share and mainly please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already all right so we're talking about anunnaki everybody all right and then uh we've got aiden hansen all the way in the united states uh well let's say he's hosting the show yeah all right so uh before we get to uh, number two let's talk about the earliest known usages of the term anunnaki or anunnaki rather Okay, so the earliest known uses of the term Anunnaki come from the inscriptions written during the region of Gude uh, and the third dynasty of the UR. Now, the earliest text, the term is applied to the most powerful and important deities in the Sumerian pantheon. The descendants of the sky god, I mean called An, A-N, An. Uh, the, the group of deities probably included the seven gods who decree An, Enlil, Enki, Ninhursag, Nana, Utu and Inanna. Now, although the certain, these certain deities are described as members of the Anunnaki, no complete list of names of all the Anunnaki was or has survived. And they are unusually only referred to as a cohesive group of literary texts. Now, furthermore, Sumerians just, well, Sumerian texts uh, describe the Anunnaki inconsistently and do not agree on how many Anunnaki they were or what their divine function actually was. So originally, the Anunnaki appear to have been heavenly deities with immense powers. In the poem Enki and the World Order, the Anunnaki do homage to Enki. So check, if you want to Google uh, do homage, as in H-O-M-A-G-E, uh, check it out. You'll find out more about it. Okay, um, well, anyway, they used to sing hymns of, of praise in his honor and take up their dwellings amongst the people of summer. Now, the same composition twice states that the Anunnaki decreed the fates of mankind. Quite scary, huh? Coming in at number two with uh, Aiden Hansen with the Nazca Lines. And at number two are the Nazca Lines. The Nazca Lines, formed in 500 BC, are a collection of intricate and enormous geoglyphs etched into the arid desert landscape of southern Peru. They have puzzled and captivated researchers and enthusiasts for decades. These ancient and mysterious designs, ranging from simple lines to elaborate animal and geometric shapes, have led to a plethora of evidence pointing towards Anunnaki existence. The Nazca Lines were created by removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert 
revealing the lighter colored earth beneath. The designs, some of which span hundreds of feet, are best observed from the air. The complexity and precision of these formations, combined with the technological limitations of the time, suggest that these formations were not made just by humans, but in fact, these ancient civilizations received help from the Anunnaki. Many theorize that the Nazca lines were used as a form of communication between the Anunnaki, as they were the only ones able to access the sky at the time. They could fly over the Nazca desert, observe the drawings, and through those messages could find out where specific resources, landmarks, and civilizations were. Another theory is that the long, 100 foot long lines were actually runways for Anunnaki vessels, along with the colossal shapes that depicted different animals, such as monkeys or hummingbirds, also being landing spots, much like a crop circle. The religious and spiritual practices of the Nazca civilization also align with the Anunnaki narrative. Ancient texts and oral traditions hint at encounters with beings descending from the heavens, shaping religious beliefs and influencing cultural practices, a common story that any culture that has come face to face with the Anunnaki holds. When we look closely, the Nazca lines unveil their true purpose as an extraterrestrial message etched onto the Earth's surface. The Anunnaki's involvement in this ancient monument also begs the question of their involvement in the creation of the pyramids and other megaliths created by means impossible by humans. Virtually every major deity in the Sumerian pantheon was regarded as the patron of a specific city um, and was expected to protect the city's interests. The deity was believed to permanently reside with, with, within the city's temple. And one text mentions as many as 50 Anarchy associated with the city of Eridu in, uh, in Nana's de well, descent uh, into the netherworld, there were only seven Anarchy who, who reside within the underworld and serve as judges. Now, Inanna stands the trial before them for her attempt to take over the underworld. They deem her guilty of hubris, uh, hubris rather, and condemn her to death. Now, major deities in the Sumerian um, mythology were associated with specific celestial bodies. Inanna was believed to be a planet Venus, and uh, Yutu was believed to be the sun. Nana was known as the moon, and uh, Anne was identified with all the stars of the equatorial sky. Those of the northern sky and Enki were those of the southern sky. The path of Enlil's celestial orbit was a continuous symmetrical circle around the north celestial pole, but those of Anne and Enki were believed to be intersect, uh, well, to intersect in at various points. Coming in at number one with Aiden Hansen, uh, the stopping of the World War III. And at number one is the latest of the Anunnaki encounters, the stopping of World War III. Only a select dozen individuals possess first-hand knowledge of how Earth appears when viewed from the lunar surface. Among them, astronaut Edgar Mitchell stands out for not only his remarkable role in the Apollo 14 mission, but also for his belief that extraterrestrial beings played a major part in preventing a nuclear conflict between the United States and Soviet Union. Edgar Mitchell's renown extends from his pivotal contribution to the Apollo 14 mission. In 80 lines of code that averted potential disaster during the spacecraft's moon descent. Beyond his technical prowess, Mitchell asserted that authorities concealed evidence of UFOs, which frequently hovered over New Mexico's White Sands testing range. It would be these same UFOs that Mitchell claims saved the world from global nuclear fallout. The story goes that during the height of the Cold War, tensions finally broke, and the Soviet Union covertly sent out a nuke set to land in New York from a submarine located in the Atlantic Ocean. However, as it was being sent, a UFO UFO intercepted the flight path and destroyed the nuclear weapon before US radars could even detect the Anunnaki craft or the rocket. Edgar Mitchell defends this, saying that the missing weapon was a blessing to the world, as no other attacks were made after the unsuccessful strike. It is entirely possible that the Anunnaki, in order to maintain control over human development, stopped the explosive in order to prevent the end of humanity, or at least the beginning of a cataclysmic war. But beyond that, there have not been any encounters with the ancient alien race that we know of. Their very existence shrouded in mystery, brushed off as simple conspiracy theories. However, with these encounters alone, we look into a version of human history that was outlined by our alien visitors. Whether or not you guys believe it's true is up to you, but my work here is done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks so much Aiden Hansen from the United States for teaching us about the Anunnaki and your yeah, he's right. Whether you believe it or not is all totally and entirely up to you. It works the same as religion and culture. And whether you believe whatever happened in the past is true or not is entirely up to you. All right, so um, do I personally believe in these things? Yes. Well, there's, there's evidence that stands and, and supports it. So yeah, I mean, 
There's something that the great Will Smith always used to say. You ain't gonna know, in it, know where you're going until you know where you've been. Yeah? Yeah, all right. All right, stay tuned for a full show of fun as, okay, we finish Educate You Now. You know, every morning my dad and mom used to be like, why don't you take an article from the newspaper and read every single day, educate yourself about information and things that are happening around you. I, I'm not gonna lie, when I was in school, I used to actually hate reading. Uh, strange enough, I used to hate reading. And, but I realized they were doing me a favor. I speak well. I carry myself well and with, with general knowledge and stuff like that or should I say what's happening in our country and history and stuff like that I became better so thanks mom and dad for that and kids if you are watching the show I'd like you to read every day force yourself to take the you know that you get the free newspaper by your house open the newspaper read two articles every day and you'll notice your English as it will, will get better and as English is uh, a universal language your, your language will get better, your literature will get better, the way you think will get better, you'll grow as a person and it's not just for school, do it for yourself. So when you go out and you speak to people, you'll notice your English is, has grown so much that you became better at everything that you do. Yeah, and you're well educated in that sense. <laughs> Nowadays I'm reading books about, I read the most weirdest things. I found a book on meditation, I haven't started it yet. But uh, thanks to Dr. P.K. Mainstreet from Malaysia South, he's like, yo, borrow this, but when you're done, you give it back. And I was like, okay, I'm going to read it. I like to read about things that are helpful. Uh, as far as entertainment goes, that's why I'm following a show called Never Have You Ever. It's a TV series. I'm sure you guys have watched it. It's quite, it's trending like crazy on Netflix. So yeah, check it out if, you, if you're getting up to anything boring, you know. Anyway, uh, stay tuned and stay exactly where you are when you come back. We're going to entertain you with lots of music. Straight after this. Welcome back to Cracker Donners! As promised, we said we're gonna have live entertainment and great music for you to enjoy in the studio. So wherever you might be, put your headsets on and crank up the volume. Coming up next, we've got orchestral medley with Speechless, Arabian Night and a whole new world all mashed up, hence we're calling it a medley. And today it's being covered by Crystal Emiliani and Francis Mary from Italy. Check them out! Anyway 
isn't a number thing. Staying in your place, they're singing, and I heard, and now the story is right now i know you feel like a kid again you were big everybody was a big fan of aladdin and i mean hello who didn't like any of the aladdin movies really uh, kids uh, adults everybody if you didn't watch aladdin go and check it out ask mommy and daddy to get it so that you can feel what my childhood was like <laughs> Keeping you well entertained on Attenville TV. A very big thank you to Crystal, uh, Crystal Emiliani and Francis Berry from Italy. Thank you guys so, so much. What a performance. I love the outfits, by the way. <laughs> I would never dress like that, but I love watching it on other people. I, I admire it. Uh, coming uh, straight up to the commercial break. A lot of music, lots of entertainment. Stay exactly where you are. We'll come back straight after this. The ultimate accessory. The latest shiny thing, mesmerized. Trying to keep up, but never getting ahead in an endless cycle of spending. In this world of constant upgrades, do you want a bank that takes your money or a bank that takes your money seriously? Welcome back, you Cracker Donners. We're currently streaming live in the nation's south 
on Actonville TV. I'm your host, Kimara Hiralal. If you didn't know, hello. Uh, welcome to the show if you are just tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already. Keeping you well entertained this morning. We've got lots of music. Bye, bye, bye. I still like educating. I know. Don't, don't shout. It's okay. All right. Here's your did you know facts coming up just to educate your mind on a Monday morning. I know a lot of kids are like, oh, I don't want to learn. It's too early. Okay. Coca-Cola. Check this one out. Did you know that Coca-Cola actually sells soup in a can? Okay. Uh, it's called Bistrone. Do you guys know it? B-I-S-T-R-O-N-E, Bastrone. Okay, uh, Bastrone is a nourishing meal on the go, available to, well, flavors in, it, it, it's actually two flavors in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, anyway, uh, if you want to know more about that, it's uh, check out worldofcocacola.com. You can get soup in a can on the go. I'm one of those kids. I wish everything could be in a can so that, or in a lunchtime. You see how I was growing up, my dad used to make my lunch for school. <laughs> All right, here's another one coming up. Did you know the biggest pizza ever created was 13,580 square feet? It was made in Rome, Italy in 2012, and the pizza was gluten-free <laughs> and named Octavia after a Roman emperor. Another fun fact, the tallest building in the world, ladies and gentlemen, is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It's standing over 2,700 feet. Check out uh, skyscrapercenter.com and get out there these nice pictures and everything. All right, uh, coming up next to keep you well entertained at work, at college, at home, wherever you might be, whether you have running your own shop in the flea market, check this out. It's uh, Save Tonight. Everybody knows that the track Save Tonight by Eagle Eye Cherry, right? Now, today it's been covered by Dylan Galvin from United States of America. Check them out. Born and close the curtain. All we need is candlelight You and me And a bottle of wine Hold you tonight Will we know That I'm going away How I wish I wish it weren't so Take this wine And drink with me Let's lay our misery Save tonight Fight the break of dawn, come tomorrow Tomorrow I'll be gone, save tonight Fight the break of dawn, come tomorrow Tomorrow I'll be gone There's a log on the fire And it burns like me for you Morning comes with one desire Take me away, it's true it ain't easy to say goodbye and Darling, please, don't start to cry Cause girl, you know I've got to go and Lord, I wish it wasn't so Save tonight Fight the break of dawn, come tomorrow Tomorrow I'll be gone, save tonight Fight the break of dawn, come tomorrow To go, and Lord, I wish it wasn't so. Save tonight, fight the break of dawn. Come tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be gone. Save tonight, fight the break of dawn. Come tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be gone. Save tonight, fight the break of dawn. Come tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be gone. Save tonight, fight the break of dawn. Come tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be gone.
Girl can actually say they love watching a man play guitar. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it was uh, United States uh, performing for you. Safe tonight. The original was by Eagle Eye Cherry, but I think he did a brilliant performance. Yeah, I love acoustic, baby. All right, all right, guys. If you are watching the show for the first time, I just want to ask you and tell you. Firstly, please can you send your content? And I'm talking to my fellow South Africans, fellow South Africans. Can you please send in your content? Uh, Attenville TV is all about upliftment and, and uplifting the community, uplifting talented people, uplifting all those we, you know, we, we know we can help. Especially with the fact that we've got the numbers. Facebook is like reaching the high skies. I'm like, yo, we got more than one and two views. It's, it's nice. It's nice. Facebook is growing. Guys, if it could just help me to, if you are from Facebook right now, right? Could you please help me traffic this, 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 this people, can I say this, this, number to youtube we're trying to grow the youtube channel as well, uh, as well. we've got 72 different platforms it's one of those platforms that are not doing so well so yeah could you help us traffic that way mm -hmm. yeah just go to the youtube channel subscribe to the channel uh, click like share and subscribe <laughs> all right all right all right today exactly where you are we're still keeping you well entertained with some great music this morning we'll come back straight after this commercial break taste that says you've arrived living a life of illusion leaving your finances on the rocks in this world of Bazotina band do you want a bank that takes your money or a bank that takes your money seriously welcome back guys my cracker darlings are you a cracker darling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, welcome back. If you just joined us, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already. And uh, yeah, we're still streaming in the Nature South, baby, right here on Attenville TV. For those of you who don't know me, I'm your host, Kimera Hirala. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, so we're doing fun facts this morning. Okay, so this is a teaching platform, by the way. I know you can say, oh, boring. No, I'm not boring. Me, I'm cool. All right, all right, <laughs> all right, we were talking about tallest places in the world. So uh, did you know the tallest building in the United States is one of the World Trade Centers in New York, which comes in at number six on the worldwide list. It stands at exactly 1,776 feet as a node to the date of Declaration of Independence. Coming in at number 66 at that today. Yeah, do you know that you go through fun facts every day? I've got thousands of them. All right, so did you know the Empire State Building in New York is the tallest building in the world from 1931 until 1971 and was the first building of over 100 floors sure imagine walking up and down there i wouldn't like to be the domestic worker in that building <laughs> all right all right another did you know fun fact okay contrary to the popular belief it's really really hard to see great wall of china from space particularly with the naked eye do you think you can see it from space? I think you can. It's quite big, it's long. <laughs> Alright uh, guys, coming up next, as you keep me well entertained on the Cracker Darling Show with great music. Now everybody knows that track, In the Shadows by the Raspers. Oh, oh, doom, doom, oh, oh, doom, doom, in the shadows. Okay, let me leave it to the professionals. <laughs> coming up next is uh, In the Shadows by the Raspers, but today it's been covered by Marcella and the Overslept Band from Netherlands. I 
until I'm done with finding the answer. Won't stop. Won't stop before I find the cure for this cancer. Don't forget to click on the link again later and watch it over, over, and over uh, again. Now, there's nothing wrong with the stream, it's just me acting. <laughs> As you know, you're on the crack of dawn, right? All right, coming up next, one of my personal favorite funny funnies, Auntie Sheila from Durban, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, ooh, I love her. Check uh, Auntie Sheila out with her hot gossip. Sandy Sheila, hey, you know, other day I went to one function and what an awesome function. But as I was sitting down on my table, I saw this woman. She's like a jumping jackman. Oh, she's a I'm just thinking, why I have to sit next to someone and run? She looked like she on flaka that one, like one shell shot. Hey, oh God, like I don't know, Fufia and Carter. Like, ah, oh. You know, I can't stand those over, you know, overactive people who try to be cool. Anyway, as she was talking, you know, darling, I got the shock of my life, man. You know, this woman were gossiping. And then she said, Ooh, I told my son he must walk out of my house if he ever marries that girl. Then I turned around and I said, You know, me to uncle always say I must shut my ass and keep quiet. I to always say why we don't shut our ass and mind our business. But I mean, I'm sitting in the conversation, you know, like, I, you know, I gotta be like sociable and stuff like that. I can't just keep quiet and sit. Right, so I said, uh, But uh, why, what the girl did something? Is she wrong? You know what the lady said? 
No, she's too dark to be in our family. And my son is so... I was like, uh, d did I hear correctly? You think she's too dark? First of all, that one too is like one Pichachi herself. She making girls. She's saying because her son is so fair. Do we honestly live in a society whereby we will let our our child be unhappy because they're choosing to marry someone dark and we'll say, no, don't marry them. You're going to marry someone who's fair. Is skin color that much of an issue, darling? I was absolutely shocked in this day and age that this mother was saying to her son, I will kick you out if you marry a dark looking girl. Are we living in such a horrible society? And then... Over and above that, she said to me, oh, you have a tie on. Are you Tamil? I was like, uh, yes, I'm Tamil. She said, oh, but you don't look Tamil. Oh, no, you don't. You're so fit. I was like, oh, auntie, auntie, eh, 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 eh. You better take your chair down and buy from here before I cut you up from this table. You are, you know, I was like, a, oh, Karaza. Is now I needed to calm down. Ooh, I needed to fan myself because I was I was getting moorings at that point. I was like, see ya, darling, what is a Tamil person supposed to look like? I am so tired of people boxing. Ashwarya Rai, darling, she's Tamil. Now she's got blue eyes, fair skin. What's a Tamil? Can you please explain yourself? Can you explain yourself what a Tamil is? Listen up, darlings, please. Let's cut this dumb issue about color. And you know that jumping jack at the end of it? Hey, I tell you not she caught such a nice drop. Are you a bun and all? Came out. Ooh, kind of like, see her, darling. Let us not be people who swim in a sea of ignorance. Skin color, looks have nothing to do. Judge a person on what's inside their heart, darling. Vanakam, darlings. Vanakam, Sheila. <laughs> you killed it. You killed it. Everybody, that was Auntie Sheila from Dublin with your hot gossip and she likes to talk about societies and wrongs and rights but in an Indian com well, comedy fashion. I love it. Thanks Auntie Sheila for joining us in the show. Hey, I'm going to give you a call a bit later. Please, I hope you watch the show. Uh, anyways, guys, if you want to share your content and share your talents right here on Attenwell TV as we are here to entertain, not only to educate, uh, say, drop, drop your, 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 your WhatsApp line at the bottom of the screen or if you want to keep it private, there's a WhatsApp line at the bottom right of the screen throughout the entire show. You can ask us the, the whole procedure as to how you get your content on air. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. Uh, well, it's a happy Monday. I hope I changed your Monday blues. If I didn't, then I haven't done my job, but I think I did. Yeah, I had a good time in the studio. Thanks to production in studio. I'd like to give Andy and Pratesh a big thank you behind the camera. Uh, thank you to all of you who did like, share, and subscribe to this channel as you're helping our channel to grow. And yeah, thank you so, so much. It means a lot to us. We're going to do this tomorrow, same time, same place. Actually, tomorrow we're going live at 9 o'clock. Uh, yeah, in the morning. So join us as we go live. My my crew is acting crazy behind the camera, so don't mind me laughing out of turn. Are uh, they doing this? <laughs> I think it was in the shadows of my life. <laughs> they all doing that in studio. All right, guys, I gotta go. Have a happy Monday wherever you might be. Stay blessed. Lots of love from myself, Kimera Hirola. Bye bye for now. <laughs>